<clears throat> we good? I uh, I told Dad I I, uh, I hate when you got two messages on your heart and you don't know which one to preach. And uh, I told Dad I said, well, one of them I've got to outline, and the other one I don't. And um, uh, it seems like God chooses the one that never never has an outline. <laughs> Oh me! Uh, this morning I, I I thought I had another the other one I was going to preach and had it prepared. And this morning this is uh, totally um, new and off the cuff, I guess uh, you could say. Um, it's not really what I would choose to preach. Uh, it's, it's been good this morning. It seems like the Lord's uh, has touched this morning, and usually. You want to go with something along those lines, kind of keep it up. Yeah. And uh, the Lord, I think, has given me something different this morning. And I don't know if it's who it's for. It may just be just for me this morning. Because um, it seems like everything I preach is uh, what I'm going through. And um, But I'll be uh, taking my text out of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 15. I've, uh, I guess, I don't know, different times of your life, the Lord uses different books of the Bible, different passages of Scripture, different verses uh, to kind of help you uh, along the road. And, and right now it seems like the book of uh, Samuel uh, has really been where God's had me at the past uh, month or two and been showing me a lot of things, kind of reading on the life of Saul and the life of David uh, and uh, kind of looking over Israel. And their life, and uh, this morning I kind of would like to bring my attention uh, and, and uh, look at Saul for just a little bit this this morning. I'll be reading in First Samuel chapter fifteen and uh, verse number twenty-eight. Now this is um, this is after after Saul has been anointed has been anointed uh, king. Over Israel um, uh, and all that, and it's kind of it's kind of bringing you up. Um, he's kind of went off, I guess you could say, the deep end. Um, he's kind of done his own thing, um, and and then we see we see here what here what happens uh, to uh, Saul's life. Verse twenty eight says, and Samuel said unto him. The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than you. Uh, and this morning, if God being my helper, um, that's the only way I'll preach this morning, I want to preach on when God re-gifts your gift. Um, I, believe, I believe that God has given each and every one of us a gift. Um, and I talk with people all the time, and, I, and, and you can say, man, the Lord has really blessed you in your singing, or the Lord has really blessed you in your, in your preaching, or the Lord has blessed you in your teaching, uh, or the Lord has really blessed you in your piano playing or your guitar playing. And a lot of people, you know, that, uh, that, that, which, is a good, which is a good thing in a way, that humbleness comes about you. You say, no, no, I can't do that, I can't do this. Uh, but may I say, we ought not shy away from a gift that God has given us. Um, I believe it. I, I was looking up some verses this morning. First uh, Peter 4.10 says, As every man hath received the gift, uh, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God has given each and every one of us a gift. Romans 12, 4 and 8 says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being one of another, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth, one teaching, or he that exhorteth, one exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with sim simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. 
What that verse is saying is, is there's many different gifts. Um, and I'm not standing up here in, in pride saying this, but God has given me the gift to get up here behind the pulpit and proclaim His Word and preach. And with God giving me that gift, I ought not back down, I ought not shy away from the gift that God has given me. I don't know, there are some other people, I don't know everybody's gift, uh, but if you don't know what your gift is, you ought to find it. Uh, I don't know, maybe some people's gifts is not always to stand up here and be seen. Uh, you might not be able to stand behind a pulpit and preach. And, and for everybody to look upon, you might not be able to stand up here and sing. Uh, for everybody to hear your beautiful voice. Uh, I believe Brother Tony mentioned it uh, uh, this morning while you was teaching. Just sometimes it's for you to sit in the back. And while the man of God's preaching the word, it'd just be good for you to sit back there and pray. And that's just your gift that God has given you. is just to sit there and pray I don't know what your gift is but it'd be a good it'll be a good day in your life when you find out what God has given you and then uh, when we do find that, that 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 gift that God has given us we ought to use it but I just want to kind of back up uh, and, I, and I'll get back to uh, chapter 15 I might do a little bit of flipping here uh, this morning, uh, but I, I want to just kind of step you through uh, the life of Saul uh, real, real, real uh, quick and brief. I, I would like to jump back to chapter uh, 9, I believe it is. I want to notice what Saul's gift was. What Saul's gift was. Now, if you'll look in chapter 9 in verse 16. Now, uh, this is as Saul, he is out uh, in the country and he's looking uh, for a bunch of donkeys for his dad. Uh, and the Lord is telling Samuel, uh, because Israel was wanting a king, uh, that wasn't really God's plan for Israel, but uh, Israel was wanting a king, so God is going to answer their request. And he tells Samuel, he said, tomorrow, verse 16, tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin. And thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the land of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cries come unto me. Now we can see that Saul's gift where it said, and thou shalt anoint him to be what? Captain. Now if you look at the word captain, that just simply means leader. So we can see that Saul's gift that God had given to Saul was to be a leader. And it was not just to be a leader over some just uh, uh, any, uh, any group out there, I mean, which would be uh, a big gift uh, right then and there, but uh, it was just not some little group, but it was God's chosen people uh, that God had chosen Saul to look after and be a leader over his people. And if you'll read on the life of Saul, it really kind of started out right. I mean, everything looked good. And if you'll read about him, it said that uh, he was a head taller than all the guys. I mean, so that looked good. It said that he was, uh, I believe it said that he was one of the choicest. I mean, it, so uh, saying that uh, you would pick him out before you would anybody else. And if you'll look on, you'll see that uh, how, how that it, you'll look that God said that it, it actually says that he gave him a new heart when he left Samuel that day. And uh, he prophesied with the prophets. The people looked at him and said, is Samuel a, a prophet now? He's prophesied. I mean, God was uh, touching Saul's life. I was reading through chapter 10. And if you look at verse 2. Uh, you can find where Samuel give uh, Samuel gives Saul three signs that he would find on his way home, and uh, you'll see that in verse two uh, that God would solve his problems, because Samuel told him he said, or them them boys told him they said the the donkeys have done been found. So we see that God had solved Saul's problem. You can read in verse four where they gave him some bread, and you can see that God would supply his need. You can look in uh, verse 6 that God would endue him with the Spirit of the Lord for service. But you can see that God was using Saul to be the leader of his people. But what happened between chapter 10 and chapter 15 where the, where, where, where the kingdom was rent from him? 
And I begin to look at that and it begin to, uh, it begin to hit me. I, I begin to think about, just to be honest, that how God has given us a gift in this life. But it seems like that we play around with it every day and we don't use it like God intended us to use it. I mean, it, it, it affected me, uh, if I could just be honest, that God would call me to preach. And it seems as if uh, for the past five years I've been playing a game with my gift and I haven't been in use it and I haven't been pushing it out like God, give it to me. God's given us a gift. I'd like to notice, if I may, uh, just I thought there's many things that you can probably point out in these chapters. Uh, some problems, some issues with Saul. Uh, but uh, I, if you would just jump to chapter 10 and verse 22. It's not, it's not something that you would be big on, but I thought about this. It said in chapter 2, the Bible says, this is now when Samuel is about to promote Saul as king to the people, and the people are going to accept Saul as king. And it says, Therefore they inquired of the Lord further if the man should yet come thither. They couldn't find Saul. When Samuel went to anoint, to pull Saul up and say, This is your king, they couldn't find him. It said that, Therefore they inquired of the Lord further if the man should yet come thither. And it said, And the Lord, ans and, and the Lord answered, uh, Behold, he hath hid himself. May I say this morning, I just want to stop right there, uh, that uh, our, our gift is to not be hid. God had anointed Saul to be king, but where was Saul? He was hiding. And I'll be honest with you, I'm just going to shoot you straight this morning. We went to that meeting, the Redfield meeting, uh, what was that, Friday night. And uh, I leaned over to a dear friend of mine. He, I said, uh, Brother Chris, whatever you do, I don't want to sit on the front row because I'm afraid Brother Dean might call me to get up there and preach. And that's funny and all. And yes, there should be some nervousness and some scared about you about those things. But we ought not start to sit in the back and try to hide something that God has given to us. And then I noticed that he was, he not only hid, but where did he hide it? Among the stuff. Your gift ought not be hid among your stuff. You can see the carelessness of Saul. He looked at his calling, his gift, as if it was any other thing out there, and he hid it among the stuff, as it was just among anything else. And may I say the calling and the gift of God that God has placed upon your life, it's not just the stuff. And it's not just something that we ought to sit by and look at it lightly. But it is an amazing thing that God would ever use you in the first place. And we ought not take the gift of God for granted. But he hid it. He was hid and he hid himself among the stuff. I believe we can see the carelessness of the gift. Uh, thou saw or treated it with carelessness. Yeah. How he hid himself among the stuff. But then I was thinking about this. Chapter 13. <clears throat> now this is when Saul, if you'll read in chapter 10, I believe it is, how Saul... I mean, Samuel told Saul, he said, now, uh, when you go up, this is when he's going to face the Philistines. He said, now, you wait seven days until I get there. Don't you do anything until I get there. Seven days came by. Samuel, Samuel wasn't there. So Saul took things into his own hands. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, uh, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. I believe you can see his complete disobedience now. When God gives, gives you a gift, uh, a 
uh, may I say, that is not... Uh, that is not for you to just go out and do whatever you want to with it. That's right. uh, but God has got a certain calling for that gift that He's given you, and that's the way you're supposed to use it. God didn't give Saul this gift uh, so then he could be leader. Oh, I'm big boy now, and I can do what I want. And really, if you'll read this, I read this for the, one of the first times, just kind of reading through it, and it sounds pretty good. Said that he, he wanted to make a sacrifice. Well, that sounds pretty good, but that isn't what God, uh, what Samuel had, what God had told Samuel for him to do. A lot of the things that we try to decide and try to put in our lives, uh, it sounds good, and we can even make it sound real good and spiritual. But that isn't what God had given, given us to do. We must be in obedience to, uh, to God and what He has told us to do in that gift. Then I thought about this. Chapter 15 and verse 17. It said, now this is, try to bring y'all up. This is when Samuel told Saul, he said to go slay the people of Amalek. And you'll find that Saul didn't obey every because Samuel told him he said destroy everything. And you'll find that Saul he did not destroy everything. He said that he destroyed the spoil and that he kept the good. So then we read in verse seventeen, and Samuel said, "When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou?" not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed the king over Israel. I believe that we can see his conceited spirit now. I believe we can see his rebellion, uh, that he is uh, going his own way. He's trying to put his hands on his own things. said, when thou wast little. I, th I believe you could probably be preached that for a while, just preach on when, when you was little. But now we can see that he is caught up in uh, rebellion. He's caught up in pride. Because uh, Samuel's saying, he's saying, Saul, you're not little no more in your own eyes. Now you've puffed yourself up and you think you're somebody. And we know that the verses say that uh, pride uh, goes for destruction and a haughty spirit for a fall. Be not wise in thine own eyes. All these verses on pride, on rebellion, we know that rebellion, if you look up in verse 23, Samuel says, for rebellion is as a sin of a witchcraft. And that's straight down the road uh, that Saul was headed to. If you'll read on, actually, in the latter part of 1 Samuel, you'll see that Saul actually goes to a witch. And because of all this, we see in verse 28, which is where I was at in the, in the beginning. And Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day. And this morning, what I'm trying to get to this morning, what if you're sitting right on the verge because you're just playing with the gift that God has given you? And there's another person right beside you that God knows that will be thankful for that gift. And God comes to you and He begins to take your gift off of you and He gives it to another. And if you'll notice, Saul never got back to where he was. If you'll actually get to the end, the last chapter, I believe it's 30, 31, the, children, the last chapter, Saul falls on his own sword and kills himself. Because Saul never got back to where he was. And this morning, I believe with all my heart that I'm watching a bunch of young people. I watch y'all get up here and sing. and uh, y'all. I, mean, I know some of y'all probably taught some classes this morning. Uh, but God's given y'all some gifts, and I keep on saying it over and over and over again. Uh, they're not to be played with as just some other, uh, some other stuff, but it is an important thing that God has given you a gift, and you ought to use it like God has given you. I not only noticed that God had said that the kingdom had been rent from Israel this day, but then it said it hath given it to who? His neighbor. 
It wasn't just some other person across the, the uh, it wasn't just some uh, man or woman across the other side of the world, but it was his neighbor. You know, probably what, it still would be bad, don't take me out of context, it would still be bad, but it probably wouldn't be so bad if God gave it to another person across the other side of the world where you didn't have to watch him use your gift. But what happens when God gives it to your neighbor? And then every Sunday morning, you've got to come in here knowing that God has given you a gift. And you have to sit here knowing that, and you have to watch your neighbor use your gift. Knowing that God was going to use you with your gift, and you have to sit here and you have to watch it every day. It was your neighbor that he gave it to, and you have to watch him knowing that that was yours. And God took it away. You say, well, God's mean. No, it's because you wasn't thankful for it and you didn't use it like you were supposed to. Y'all, this morning, I'm not trying to be a mean person this morning. And I really didn't want to preach this this morning. But this is what God's given me. I, I'm tired of us playing around with church. It's kind of funny. I was talking to Brother Jason yesterday about it. That uh, and I, I I say this lightly, but I believe that we in our realm uh, we have got caught up uh, in religion more than just uh, old fashioned old fashioned Holy Ghost living. Yes. And and half of us, I'll be honest, and I'm talking about myself. God has given us a gift. And, and, I'm not, and I'm not trying to pick out anybody in the church or anywhere for that matter. But I believe sometimes I might could go to some people and ask them what, God's, what the gift that God has given them. And they probably wouldn't even know. And then I thought about this. What if God had to come give it not only to your neighbor... And then he whispered these words in your ears. What does the last part of that verse say? That is better than that. That is better than thou. Now, God didn't, David didn't have no more of a, of a, of a, of a higher lifting or a higher thing for him to make it. Saul had everything going for him too. I really believe that. You can look and you can see where God moved upon Saul and all these different things. Saul had, it, he got, Saul had his chance too. And Saul, and how would you like it this morning if God came to you and said, said Brother Scott, I'm going to give your gift to Brother Tracy over here. Because you're not thankful of the gift and you're not using it. And so I know he will. And also, by the way, he's better than that. Boy, it's like God smote me on the heart. When I was reading this, that it's time to quit playing with our gift. It's like God hit me upside the head and said, Jacob, it's about time uh, that you quit playing with what I've given you. Jacob, I, you've been raised in a Christian home. You've had a Bible in your hand since, uh, since you were able to hold one. Uh, you were memorizing scripture since you were able to memorize it and quote it. I mean, you was in a Christian school. You were homeschooled. I mean, you, were, you went to meetings. You were uh, a part of the youth group. You've done all these things. It's time that you quit playing with the gift that I've given you. And it's like he said, and if you don't quit playing with the gift, I'm going to give it to somebody else that will use it. This morning, I just want to ask this morning, first off, do you know what your gift is? And, I, and secondly, are you using it like God has, has given it to you to use it? One of Saul's problems was is he kept on trying to take his gift into his own hands. Saul's problem was he never could take his hand off of it. 
This morning, I, I, I really believe that uh, we, we, we get so caught up in just coming to church and singing a song and hearing the preacher preach and we go home. But if that's, if that's Christianity, if, if that's living for the Lord, then we all just need to quit. I'm not trying to do away with, don't take me like Jacob said, we need to quit church. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if that's the way you're living your life for Jesus, then what's the point? God called us a lot more to do than that. Amen. It's all right, I'm going to ask my wife to come play something soft on the piano. What are you doing with your gift this morning? Is it just among the stuff this morning? If, if, if God wanted to pronounce you this morning with your gift, could He find you? I mean, we know God can find, we know He's everywhere, but what I'm trying to say, are you trying to hide it? Or maybe you know your gift, but you just keep on trying to take a hold of it. So, Lord, I think this is the way I need to use this gift. And then you try to make it spiritual and try to make it right. Everybody stand this morning. How are you using your gift today? I'm not trying to, once again this morning, I'm not trying to be mean or belittle. But it is, it is time, and we've talked about the coming of the Lord. We've hit it, heard it mentioned here and there. And I would rather be found faithful using my gift for God. And then get to the judgment seat. Or how about you get to the judgment seat, and for the first time, God tells you that you had a gift, and you never knew about it. Say, well, I can't, I can't do, I can't speak in front of a lot of people. Okay. God might not have given you the gift to preach. Men. Ladies, you may say, well, uh, I can't sing. I can't stand in front of people to sing. Well, that's fine. God's given you another gift. Maybe God's given you a standard to live in front of everybody that they may want and desire that gift that God has given you. But Tony, some of us might just need to, God might have given that gift for you to sit back there and pray. You say, well, that's not big. To be honest, believe it or not, whether you want to believe it or not, prayer is one of the biggest things that you can have. I've heard many men preach, but I've heard very few men that can pray and get hold of heaven. God has given you a gift this morning, and we ought to use it, church. Oh, my. This morning, it's good if we'd find it. It's, this, this Christian life, it doesn't stop with salvation. Salvation is just a byproduct of what he's doing. Going to heaven was just a byproduct. God's trying to get back to that, what he lost back in Genesis with Adam, that fellowship. It's more than just a salvation, being saved. Thank God for salvation. But God's wanting that daily fellowship with him. And he's wanting you to use that gift in this life. He didn't call you to sit on a pew do nothing, but God called you to do something for service this morning. If you've got a need, please come. Please come.